Well, for the day, we've been Brian in. Good evening, Brian. How are you doing? Yes, I'm doing fine. Thanks very much. Brian, do you want to kind of give us a heads up and let people know what's going on? For people who aren't aware what's happening, tell us what's happening with Atov and UK Column. Right, OK. Well, um, first of all, the organisation is, is ATVOD, which is uh, the, author- okay. It's okay. the authority uh, for television on demand. And they approached us right at the beginning of February. They said they were investigating the UK column as a service and they were looking to see whether we had um, already committed breaches of their regulations. Um, This was in relation to the Communications Act 2003. And in particular, they were looking under Rule 1, which is the requirement to notify an on-demand program service, Rule 4, the requirement to pay a fee, and um, Rule 11, a requirement to ensure that children will not normally see or hear material which might seriously impair their development. So this um, nasty little organisation, which of course is a private company, it's a limited company, is um, the right-hand man for Ofcom. Ofcom is obviously monitoring um, broadcast television, whereas Atvod is looking at people that provide um, an on-demand service over the internet. So that's what happened. They came to us. Uh, They said they were investigating us. Um, We challenged them, uh, but by the 24th of April, they sent us a letter to say that they uh, had reached a determination and that we were in breach of two rules. Rule one, the requirement to notify an on-demand program service, and rule four, the requirement to pay a fee. Now, before I hand back to you, I'll I'll just say that, um, of course, the other thing that ATVOD does is it monitors uh, programs that have been put, put out. One of the things they monitor for is hate speech. But, of course, they don't fully define what the hate speech could be, so ATVOD could decide what that is. And the other thing is they alone make the decision as to what a TV-like program is. And uh, in ATVOD's rule book, hard, um, hardcore pornography is a television-like uh, production. So that's the situation. We said we weren't going to uh, play with these people. And um, so what we did is we took down our videos on YouTube because that was the bit they said formed the on-demand service. So we have refused to engage with them and we've pulled down our videos um, posted on YouTube. And in order to make the point to people, we've um, uh, temporarily pulled our live broadcasts because we wanted to get people to understand that this is absolutely the start of um, Cameron's government censoring the Internet. And uh, what does it mean? Well, it means that UK Column ultimately uh, might not be on air and anybody else who is posting videos to YouTube, uh, even if it's from their bedroom, this organisation is now coming for them. There's no question of it. What's their definition of video on demand? Uh, Well, basically, um, a service which enables users to select individual programs from amongst the programs included in the service to receive the selected program using an electronic communications network and to view the selected program when the user chooses. Well, that's exactly what YouTube does. Right. So that means that, well, should YouTube not be paying them a license? To, uh, because at the end of the day, that's their service. Uh, well, a couple of people have actually sort of suggested that, but I, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. What we've got here is a private company, which is, I, I, I can tell you more about this, but we'll just keep it simple at, at, the, at the moment. This private company uh, is deciding itself what constitutes TV-like programs, and um, they they have been heavily involved, of course, with the BBC and other major broadcasters. They have cosy little discussions with them, but they alone decide what TV-like means, and you've got to be producing TV-like programs, but they also say that hardcore porn is TV-like. So 
nobody in their right minds would want to be regulated by this vicious little organization because they're already out of control. You have a group of some nine directors who have all got huge uh, vested interests in, in other companies throughout the media and uh, media law uh, playing field. And they can have cosy little meetings behind closed doors to decide what you and I say and what we put up on the Internet to inform people. So it's very dangerous uh, for YouTube to say we're happy to be regulated by them would be unbelievably dangerous. So what about, okay, so are we, is it the bait, is the issue the, the actual content that you have up on YouTube or the fact that you're doing a live streaming broadcast? Well, no, it's stream. Um, it's not the live stream, it's where it is a, a, an on-demand service. Mm. So if, if you like, Ofcom provides the, uh, the live um, element, but of course Ofcom at the moment is not digging its nose into the internet. But at VOD, which is effectively a subsidiary of Ofcom, is digging its, its, its nose, its snout into the Internet. But it is only going for um, television-like programs which are provided as an on-demand service. Right. So, okay. so we, we've taken down UK Column live in its, its um, optimum form because we want to say to people, and they seem to be picking up the message, we are a gnat's whisker away from this group of individuals meeting behind closed doors, deciding what we can and cannot say when we're, we're broadcasting, if we do it in a professional way, and uh, we have opening credits, we have a producer, we have lower thirds and all those other things, which... Uh, are generally acknowledged to make a sort of um, visual uh, broadcast look professional. Okay, so if you moved your videos, for example, I'm just getting my head around this because I know you've been involved in it, but it's obviously new to us. If you moved your videos to Vimo or Daily Motion or one of these other services, would that make a difference? No, it, w it wouldn't make any difference if if that service ultimately allows people to pull them off. The only thing that makes a difference is if um, we produce the material, but it then goes out so that anybody could um, host that material. Um, so um, and we, of course, are looking at this, that if, if we essentially... Uh, we produce the programs, but then we say to people, anybody, you want to have a YouTube channel and put our material up, please do. Then we are not responsible for that video on demand element. And therefore, AppVod has to get back in its box. OK, so and what about if there was a, a service in Iceland, say, and you used and the, the website address was, you know, located in Iceland and the hosting was in Iceland and your videos were uploaded on that server in Iceland? Well, uh, well that, that would work um, with the proviso that uh, we would not be able to have any um, editorial or production responsibility for the site in Iceland because AppVod, which makes up its own rules as it goes along, uh, simply says, well, you're you're initiating the service in the UK. We hold jurisdiction over the UK. Therefore, it doesn't matter if ultimately uh, the on demand is in Iceland. We can still regulate it. Right. So if you had the say the MP4 videos available for download on the UK column website and then one of our Icelandic friends loaded it up on their website in Iceland, then it's out of your hands, really. Well, this is, this is absolutely true. And I, I will say, um, as a secret between all of us listening tonight, we are looking at our options very closely. Um, so at the moment, um, we have made a point. Um, we thought this was unbelievably dangerous to any of us, all of us that are trying to get the truth out via alternative media and in particular via media over, over the Internet. And so we said, are we going to give in to these people? Absolutely not. Um, 
they were from the outset they're waving a big stick because they they can impose fines of up to two hundred and fifty thousand pounds and as i say if you sign up to them okay signing up only costs a few hundred pounds but once you've done that then they regulate you they can they can uh, pull you because they don't like what you say they can decide that material let's say we're criticizing the government they decide that's hate speech we get pulled yeah they write a, they write a, a letter to youtube and uh we're we're shut down off youtube these are very dangerous people so we said what's the best way we can highlight the danger we are going to show what we are very close what what's very close to happening and that is people get completely shut down so that's why we took the step to take off the usual uk column live news and okay we've introduced some uh, a bit of black humor but we want to ram home to people that we will be transmitting from cars on the move we will uk column will you will anybody else will if we allow these um, people to uh, regulate without authority. Can I just use the expression, who the hell do these people think they are? If you look at the directors, they are on a huge gravy train where they can, the the um, chief executive, a guy called Peter Johnson, history of the media industry, um, other directors, the chairman, Ruth Evans, history of the media industry these people can increase their salaries and remuneration simply by finding more people to bully into signing up with atvod so peter johnson is the chief executive he's already on a hundred and two thousand pounds a year and um who 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 selected him who put him in post yeah this this make common purpose look <laughs> look like a pantomime well, this uh, this uh, reeks to me of the internet too, which is what they want to do, Brian. You know, we've talked about this on the show before, where the internet too will be a subscription-only service, and you'll have access to just websites that they dictate. And then what they'll do also is that when you want to set up your own website, you'll have to get some authorization from the local council. And they have to approve it before they let you. So if you're a this, business, they they let you. But if you say, well, I'm setting up an alternative media website, they'll go, no, you're not. Right. You you are absolutely correct on this. And let's use an example of radio. So um, a lot of community radio stations around the country, FM, under the rules that they operate on, if you are, are a presenter, in one of uh, uh, as a community radio presenter you are not allowed to give your own view you you can host a program and you can have people on as your guests giving a view but you as the presenter are not allowed to give any view mm. so you can see that the control is already there in in the um in the airwave transmissions and now they want to do it on the internet and yes, they are going to take us towards the point that some local authority person, again, democracy out the window, is going to say, well, yeah, you'd like to have open your mind uh, Internet radio, but I think you've got a political agenda or you've been extreme. We're not going to allow you allow you to broadcast. Mm. So this this is very dangerous. And we, we UK column are saying to, to everybody we can now, please understand that this is the start. This is the thin end of the wedge of regulation of the Internet. And I'll reinforce this by saying that um, Atvod has made very big of the fact that it's there to protect children by preventing them being able to see online uh, pornography. Uh, so they've imposed some pretty big fines on on porn sites, Playboy TV got 35,000, Demand Adult got 65,000, and Strictly Broadband was fined 60,000. So here's Atvod making its money on the back of the pornography industry, which it then says, well, hang on a minute, we're here to protect children. Now, what's been very interesting is that in the last few days, um, 
people involved with the adult industry have contacted the UK column to say we knew we the adult entertainment industry knew when we first saw at VOD that it was not about regulating online pornography. It had a much darker agenda and that was mission creep in order to start regulating anybody on the Internet. And it, it appears that UK column has been chosen to be number one victim. And I, I believe Ian Crane has pulled his down as well. Well, um, we, we, of course, were, were posting stuff for, for Ian. Um, and um, uh, we, we, we will produce new arrangements. Uh, but here we are, you know, we've been doing a lot of work to expose fracking and what fracking is all about and show the demonstrations. And now as a result of that VOD, that material has been pulled. OK, maybe it's only going to be down for a couple of weeks, but let's come back. At VOD is a private company with people selected. I don't know how they were selected, but. They're riddled with vested interest because all of them have got multiple jobs within the media and media law industry. They meet behind closed doors, no members of the public present. We're not even present to, to see what's going on or to make representation to them. And they come back, they say we're guilty. This well, this is unbelievably dangerous. Well, if being a private company, it's in their interest to try and make money and obviously using the Communications Act, I can see um, I can see uh, ISPs in Outer Mongolia doing a lot of uh, very good business. You know, <laughs> I can, well, I can, that's, I can, that's I can, true. Let's let's just take. We believe that a gentleman called Ian McBride led to the team of three, which produced the determination against the UK column. I believe that is correct. Um, now, what if? Whether or not it's correct, let's deal with some facts. This man retired from ITV in 2008 after eight years of being managing editor and director of compliance. Um, so he sits in judgment on us. But at the same time, he's also running a company called Media Compliance Services, LLP, which is giving advice to media companies about compliance. And, and that is linked in with another company. Well, you can find it by www.rights.tv, which takes you to the Compact Media Group, which just happens to be working with BBC Worldwide. And this is providing advice on intellectual property rights. So this man is not independent in any shape or form. And yet we have been told we're waiting to find out from Atbob whether this is true that he was one of the, their directors that sat in judgment on us. The chief executive of ATVOD, Peter Johnson, is on record in a, a telephone conversation of saying, well, of course, one of their jobs is to look after competition to the mainstream media. So a private company making judgments behind closed doors is acting to defend um, rotten organisations like the BBC, ITV, the major companies, from competition from people as frightening as us. Yeah. Well, they're obviously getting concerned about things. They're obviously getting concerned. I mean, we, we just had Jim on earlier, Brian. And, yeah. and, and, and as you know, people are switching off the TVs in droves in America and they're not buying the newspapers. I mean, I think the average age of what people that watch the news over there is about 55 plus. And over here, it's just the same. People are beginning to realize that the mainstream media or the lamestream media are just full of lies and they're not telling the truth and they're not reporting what's really going on and people are switching off and they're struggling and so what they're saying is right okay if we can't get more people well then what we're trying to do is restrict the system but i don't think they realize the people who, who might come up with the idea to try and restrict the system but the internet is a global system and they i think they forget the likes of there are countries that are outside the jurisdiction of europe and um, who will be more than happy to host websites and, uh, you know, host video 
uh, material and you could put it up there. So, you know, I'm not too sure exactly what they think they're going to be able to do when there's some countries that they won't, uh, able, won't be able to do anything with. I mean, Russia, you know, for one, uh, Eastern European countries, you know, hosting services over there. Well, I, I totally agree with this, and, and they are frightened. This is a sign, I agree, that, you know, the establishment um, is is frightened. What are they frightened about? They're frightened that more and more people are not only uh, tuning in to alternative forms of media, but, of course, more and more ordinary people are providing that media themselves. So we can see the establishment getting frightened, Um Mike and I obviously had a chat about, about the whole thing fairly early on over a cup of coffee. And you say, why have they gone for us? And we think they've gone for the UK column because of the style that we've been presenting our news and the fact that we've been really getting in the faces of the politicians and uh, pulling apart how they're doing stuff and who's involved. Uh, so we've been very factual in what we've been doing. It was um, the UK column that... Um, did all of the initial exposure of common purpose and what happened, the mainstream media eventually picked up on that and that blew open Leveson. And, if, and I will tell you there are connections between the Media Standards Trust and Atvod. Um, so UK column instrumental in getting the mainstream press to understand the dangers of common purpose, the Media Standards Trust and the Leveson inquiry. We've also stuck to our guns over the Holly Gregg case. And I, I can tell you, and I'm going to keep saying that case real, the Scottish government spending over two million pounds trying to silence Robert Green and anybody else talking about what really happened. We've got reason to believe that the Scottish government was involved in this uh, attempt to close us down. And we, we, we were told, uh, by a very, very good contact before the last election. This was somebody that was close to the Tories campaign, um, office that, um, there'd been a discussion in which David Cameron said in relation to the UK column and similar, um, outlets that when we get into power, we will regulate against people like that. And I think this is what we've now started to see. Cameron, uh, Miliband, Nick Clegg, they know the writings on the wall. Um, we and many other people are talking about the whole of those three parties as criminal affairs, protecting paedophiles. And that is what I believe. And I am going to keep saying that. And this has now started to frighten the pants off these uh these people so what do they do oh god we've got to shut them up well i think there's a there's there is light at the end of the tunnel there brian i'm sure you know and i'd be more than happy to um talk to you uh myself and steve talk to you off air and mike i'm sure you've probably covered enough bases but there's other things that you possibly you could possibly do as well and um to you know look at different ways to actually do this um i don't think i think there is light at the end of the tunnel um but it's just a pity. But there you go. That goes to show you are having an effect on these, on the government, on what you're doing because they are running scared. And we had Jim on earlier, and Jim was saying that you know the plans for these people who are in power, they're the way behind their plans because people are beginning to wake up, realize what's going on, not watching the propaganda, pulling away from it, and people are going to the internet to look at the real news and they're moving away from the the, the media and they're not being mind controlled. By the, uh, by the television sets, which is great to see, uh, programs like yourself and what you, Mike and Louise do is fantastic and, you know, it's a brilliant show, great information. Um, I, th- I think one thing you said earlier I'd just like to comment on, you know, myself and Steve try not have an opinion on certain subjects because we do think it's down to the listeners to form their opinion and we don't want to give our opinion which might influence their opinion. Uh, but on on saying that, the whole idea is that we get people on, like yourself and Jim and everybody else, and give their opinion on what they've done and their background, and you know, and then the listeners can decide from there. And sometimes it's very hard. You have to bite your bite your tongue and say, well, you know, this is what I think, because we do feel strongly about certain subjects. 
um, that need to be sorted. But um, hopefully, somebody just posted there in the chat room saying, isn't taking down your site playing into their hands? Um, you know. Well, the answer to that is is absolutely no, because in in um, in in stopping the normal style of broadcasts, we've had a phenomenal response from people, and we've just we've just been doing um, some interviews with um, um, Pete Santilli and uh, Patrick Henningsen, and uh, we've got more interviews. Uh, planned stateside because people in America are paying attention to this. Um, so no, we wanted to do something that would really uh, make people think, and uh, that's why we've done it. Um, it. We're not disappearing; we're simply putting a, a line in the sand, and we're we are screaming from the rooftops to, for people to wake up. And just on this subject, on on this. This, um, you know, this issue of opinions. Um, I know what you're saying, and I, I, I'm going to say with a smile on my face, I don't disagree. However, one of the things that is being pushed uh, through the means, mainstream media, and, and has been for many years, is that every there are two sides to every story. Mm. Now, this is a very dangerous little expression. Because we are now in an age where there's only one thing that matters, and that is what is true. It's to do with what is truth and what is not truth. And, okay, there's going to be times when we're, we're dealing with topics where the truth can't be proved one way or another, and then people are putting opinions or they're putting research across, and to, to promote that in, in a balanced way, I, I totally agree is the right thing to do. But when we're dealing with um, information where factually it can be proven what the situation is, then to my mind, there's only one way to go. You've got to tell the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, totally, totally. I totally agree with you. Um, what we find, though, is that there's a lot of opinions on certain subjects and it depends on where the, the guest is coming from. You know, that from that side. And I totally agree, the truth is the truth is the truth, even if one person's only saying it. Um, what kind of muddies the water is when you have five people who think they have the truth. Yes, I accept that. <laughs> and this is where you kind of discernment has to kick in. Just, um, just touching base on, on what's going on with the Atbot situation. I don't know whether you heard about David Icke leaving the people's voice. Do you think there's anything uh, sinister going on there? Um, well, the immediate answer is I don't know exactly what's gone on. But the thing that I've picked up from, you know, being on the sidelines and, and watching it is that there's definitely been a lot of angst and infighting and egos. Um, and um, I think this is one of the things that we are all really going to have to get a grip of because, we see it in local groups. I'm sure it's happened in Ireland or still happening in Ireland. It's happening over yeah. here. It's happening in the States that where people are beginning to form themselves and to try and do something, in come the egos, in come the big troublemakers. Yeah. And in next to no time, there's a big firefight and everybody's split up. And yeah. of course, the other side loves this. Mm. So I, I don't know exactly uh, what's going on with the people's voice. I know um, David Icke seems to have moved away from it. That's what his statement uh, he recently posted says. Um, I know there's a there appears now to be a shortage of money, um, but um, I don't know anything more than that. I agree with you that. Uh, I reckon and I feel that has got to do with egos. And we, we're always saying, and we've had people on the show who, who we've talked about, we have to move away from ego and ignorance and move towards humility and wisdom. That's our goal. Yeah. That's our path in life for everybody. You know, because the world's going to be a much better place if we have humility and wisdom. Unfortunately, ego does get involved. And, you know, OAM has always kind of been, we've worked kind of with other groups, as you know, Brian, but OAM has fundamentally myself and Steve. And, yeah. and it's a reason why it's been like that, because we know that groups can be infiltrated and we know that egos get involved and we are concerned about that. 
So you have to be very careful. So getting groups together is a great thing, as long as people park the ego outside. And if anybody in the group is pulling the group away from where they should be or anything negative, well then, unfortunately, fingers have to be pointed because that person's pulling the group in the wrong way. Why are they doing that? And why are they being negative? So, you know, they're, they're the questions I'd be asking for any group that's that's together. And, you know, if somebody's in the group and that's happening, then you have to ask the question. And I'm sure you've come across that yourself. Yeah. Well, I to- totally agree with that. The other bit, um, we get call after call every week. We are taking calls from people. I'm sure you guys are as well from yeah. people who've had their property taken from them. People who've had their children taken from them. Yeah, yeah we do. Have businesses stolen. People who've been beaten up in police stations. People really suffering and hurting. Yeah. That's the reality of, of our society today. And we're dealing with that. And then we see people I think they are still playing a game. They think to to be um, um, researching or listening to programs over the Internet where people are talking about the new world order coming. It's entertainment. Well, it isn't entertainment because what is coming, unless we all get to grips with it and stop it, what's coming is the camps. And with that, everything that we've seen in history is coming People are going to disappear in black cars. 600 people disappeared in black cars in the UK in the last 12 months. Uh, We're going to see internment camps. We're going to see political murders. We're already seeing the British government use torture and condoning torture. Yeah? Yeah, this is the reality. And for people to be playing games, if I sound a bit motivated tonight, I assure you I am. For people to be squabbling, infighting, and, um, and um, you know, I'm not going to play with them because they don't believe in this sort of thing. We've really got to, to get our act together. People don't get on all the time. That's true. And, you know, select people you enjoy working with. That, that takes some of the weight off. But we are fighting callous, vicious killers. That's what the British government comprises of at the moment internment camps are well on their way we see the police here fully armed automatic weapons tasers cs gas they're ready to go and we've still got people squabbling or or posting the most ridiculous stuff attacking other people in in the movement yeah, we've got to get over this. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We've five minutes left there, Brian, but I totally agree. This infighting and this attacking, we all have to find. If you're really interested in doing something about it, we all find the common ground, and then we walk together on it. I, I don't have time, and Steve's the same. We don't have time for this infighting. That's just childish. Grow up, find the common ground, and walk together. This information has to get out because we're all going to be affected. I mean, we we get in, like you, Brian. We get phone calls. We just had an email during the show. Somebody's contacted us on an email, asked us he's gone to lose his house, and he wants some advice on what to do and everything else. So we'll be getting back to him shortly. And we, like you, we get phone calls, and there's things that we're trying to do in the background, which I'm not going to talk about now on air because um, there's nothing definite at the moment. But we're trying to put something together. Myself and another individual regarding the whole eviction process, and um, but we will. Um, so just when the information comes about, when it's something sorted, we'll be in touch. But we have four minutes left, Brian. Before one quick question, Steve. Okay. Yeah, I have a quick question, Brian, and it, it came in earlier. I I didn't think it was relevant to when you were speaking about um, the way kind of the Atvod was investigating you. But this question came in and. I said I'd ask it, but it's from a, one of a, a listener called Trent. I guess and Trent is, is new to the chat, and he's wondering what does what's Brian's thoughts on Kevin Annette and the ITCCS. Right, I support Kevin Annette. Um, I I am convinced his story is true. I will say it like that because there's been one or two people attacking Kevin Annette. If you look into the background of his story, what he's endured in trying to expose the massacre of these Canadian Indian children, massacre and abuse of these Canadian Indian children, absolutely uh, um, correct. Um, I support what he's doing for common law. 
Uh, the only bit that I wouldn't support immediately is we don't need in UK a um, uh, good grief. What's the word? He, he, suggesting we should get rid of the monarchy. Uh, the people in the position of monarchy at the moment are the problem, not the concept of having a monarchy. Yeah, republic. That was the word. So I, I am a total supporter. Uh, I think he's endured hu a huge amount. And the fact that Theresa May blocked him from coming into the country says she's very frightened of him. So he gets my vote. OK, brilliant. Well, listen, Brian, we're just to stay with us there for a minute, Brian. We're just going to finish up. But do you want to give us a quick um, give us your website address and any contact details where people can get in touch with UK Column? Right. Well, the website's www.ukcolumn.com dot o r g and if you want to get in touch it's just editor at uk column dot o r g brilliant stuff i think what we'll have to do brian is we'll do a full show with maybe with yourself and mike or yourself and louise come on and do um we'll do a full interview because in a few weeks time things are changing so fast so if you don't mind doing that we'll i'll be in touch with you and we'll book something in and we'll do because this is serious stuff. This at FOD and what's going on is going to affect a awful lot of people. And I think the more heads up and the more we talk about it, the better and we get it out to the public. But listen, thanks a lot for coming on. Just stay with us there. And next week's on next week's show, we are.